Greetings nerdy list aficionados, and well, you all wanted it, it's time to come back to the Avengers yet again. But not to the A team, to the B team, or rather the D team. D for disaster. Last time there was some scandal, some triggering about who was on the list. How dare you, Tigra is hot, and how dare you, the US agent saved my whole family, you pleb, you cretin. So real talk for a second for the triggered amongst you. Firstly, these lists are for fun. If you have a fave character that you stand, that's great. You stand the US agent. Someone has to. Secondly, sometimes a character can have a bad run or a defining one that can be for a team and maybe it makes them feel like they don't suit that team anymore. Meaning each person is going to have a different relationship with that character. Three, a character can be great and just not belong on a team or a certain version or era of that team. Case in point, the Green Lantern. He's supposed to be patrolling the whole sector. He shouldn't be on the Justice League in anything other than a reserve capacity. Capacity. Four, again, this is all for fun. We're not planning to dust all these characters out of existence. You keep that tiger post over your bed, and I'll keep the one of Hal knocking himself out on a bar of soap. Seriously, if you love a character, love them. It doesn't matter what someone else thinks. Side note, I saw some of you getting salty the other way down there. Tony Stark. Hawkeye, Oof, they're crying. Now I'm Sasha and let's chat about the top 10 worst Avengers part two. It's happening. Part two, the triggering. <laughs> Sandman. Let's start off with a villain turned Avengers member. The Sandman first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man number 4 back in 1963. However, as time went on, his backstory was tweaked from pure villain to more of a redemption style arc with a more sympathetic backstory. A man trying to do the best he could with what he had. All of this ultimately led him to The Avengers. This was after he had received a presidential pardon for his past crimes. The Avengers for a time had a bit of a what better way to redeem someone than give them a spot on the team, the ultimate sign of trust. Now the Sandman is only a reserve member, so he's only getting called up under dire circumstances. Silver Sable will probably call him first. Or she would have. Because comics are as ever retconning and resetting, and the Sandman was back to his villainous ways. And eventually he lost the ability to hold his form for a time, but he'll be back. Nevertheless, it's more comic book characters lack of ability to maintain their progression except in extreme circumstances that makes him a poor member. It's the medium's fault, not his. Number nine, Jack of Hearts. So Jack of Hearts with the power of the playing card. Just kidding. He first appeared in Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, number 22, in 1976. In all seriousness, it took Jack a while to gain control of his powers, that being that he can explode himself. So this kind of attack can be useful. It's less useful, however, when you kill your own teammate. So Jack of Hearts killed the second Ant-Man, Scott Lang, with one of his explosions. This was after he had been resurrected by the Scarlet Witch during the Avengers disassembled storyline. Sometimes dead is better. They never learn. This time Jack stayed dead for a while. I mean his first death was supposed to be heroic as his powers were out of control. But man, how anticlimactic. But don't worry about Scott, he got better. Number eight, Silverclaw, Maria de Guadalupe Santiago. This character. So Silverclaw entered into the Avengers scene thanks to her connection with Jarvis, the Avengers' butler, who was her pen pal at the childcare center where she was raised. She grew up on tales of the Avengers that he would tell her in the letters that he wrote. No confidentiality at the Avengers' mansion. When coming to visit Jarvis, a terrorist situation broke out and she got to showcase her abilities and become a tentative part of the team, when she wasn't at school that is. She even initiated the next story arc, one that revolved around her and her mother. Now people just didn't take to Silverclaw, and some felt that she was monopolizing the time that could be spent on more established Avengers. Also, not many characters made it out of the 90s. Number 7, Black Knight. So there have been a couple of Black Knights, actually more than a couple, and yes, they are all medieval themed, a concept that is really hit or miss in the modern era. For our purposes, we need Dane Whitman from 1967, who joins the Avengers in a wacky new hero take on the character, he's even related to the first Black Knight. How bold and daring. Okay, to be fair, this concept was nowhere near as played out in the 60s as it is now. So why is he here? Well, it's not just the whole operating in a different tier than depending upon the threat level could be mostly, well, not useful. For many, it just wasn't interesting. There wasn't much pathos there. Sure, maybe to some he was super compelling, but for many, the Black Knight is meh. 
middle of the road. Number 6. Gilgamesh, the Forgotten One He is a member of the Eternals and might get that MCU bump thanks to the Eternals movie that is in the pipeline at the time of this recording. He first appeared in Eternals 13 in 1977. He joined the Avengers because they needed people. He joined at a time when they were desperate for members. Gilgamesh is powered up for sure, but not everyone took to him. He's participated in some big events, but again, not everyone seemed to embrace him. It's hard to step onto an established team. Sometimes it's just not that deep. Number 5. Squirrel Girl So Squirrel Girl, first she is beloved by many, and she can be a very fun character. However, at the start, she was very much conceived of as a bit of a joke. Even the plot where she defeats Doctor Doom is meant to be comedic. There's a character in The Tick called Squirrel Girl who has the exact same powers. Now, there's nothing wrong with Squirrel Girl, and she is a friend to many Avengers. However, as a full-fledged member of the team, is it really necessary? I mean, unless you're Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, they use her as a babysitter. And for a lot of Avengers adventures, she just guards the mansion. Fun character? A hero for sure. But does she need to be a member of the Avengers? Eh. Number 4. Red Hulk Yes, you heard that right. The Red Hulk. Thaddeus Ross. Just kidding. We're talking about Robert Maverick. This is the second Red Hulk, and a very new character at the time of this recording, appearing first in 2016. He joined the US Avengers and manages to sport a mustache even as the Red Hulk. It's not a red stash though. The stash cannot be contained. So what's wrong with Red Hulk 2.0? Well, to many, he just kind of felt like a gimmick. Look, the Red Hulk, but good. It's Black Knight Syndrome. Sure, for some, he was super cool. For others, again, it was meh. Free Thanos. Okay, this is a bit of a sidestep reach, but that's part of the fun of alternate versions. So this comes from a recent at the time of this recording What If run, What If Infinity War, that sees a world where Thanos joins the Avengers. Thanos makes a deal with the Avengers to protect Earth during the Infinity Arc. The problem? He's still very much Thanos, so he still becomes a despot and, well, takes over. Your ally conquering your planet? Yep, but that makes you a bad Avenger. You're not a team player, Thanos. They would have let your past slide. They'll let anyone join. Number two. Stingray. So this character, Walter Newell, first appears as Stingray in 1969. He was a marine biologist who encounters Namor, the Submariner. And while this encounter changes the course of his life, he ends up a little enamored with him and determined to prove to the world that Namor isn't the villain everyone thinks he is, and in the process constructs his own superhero identity. He ends up on the Avengers because he assists them on a mission. And you know if you do that, you're pretty much in. Show up, bring your toothbrush. So Stingray is powered and augmented by his suit. He's flitted in and out on teams since then. But again, he just never really took off, and he's one of those Avengers people like to make fun of. Is it the costume? Because if it is, I kind of like it. I don't know, maybe people just don't have much attachment. And maybe I'm going to get people saying that like the US agent, Stingray also saved their families. It could go either way. Number 1. Star Fox So yes, he made it this time. We had to save him. There is much to talk about. So Star Fox is Eros and brother to Thanos. But here's the thing. They went hard on the Eros angle and gave him pheromone persuasion powers that, well, specifically at the start, targeted women because heteronormativity. But the worst thing? They used it. Yup, Star Fox seduced ladies with this power. And not even in the altered carbon, oh, you know it's happening but can't stop it, but sometimes in the you don't even remember what happened way. This earned him the nickname in some circles of the walking roofie. He sometimes used this power quite brazenly and with the attitude that the woman should be grateful. You know, oh, you're Star Fox. Thanks so much for raping me. Ooh, I was assaulted by an Avenger. Man, it's bad for PR and just bad in general. Even if this ability is completely retconned away or used better, which would be difficult, but if well written, could happen, for many, the character is tainted. It's like that panel of Hank Pym slapping the wasp. Context be damned, the character for many is just ruined. So, Star Fox is number one, because for many, he's not just a terrible Avenger, but an awful character. What an awkward way to end a list. Come on, all right, come at me. Jack of Hearts is the best Avenger of all time. Silverclaw is too hot to be on any list. Fire this noob. In all seriousness, thanks so much for hanging out with us here on Top 10 Nerd. Last time I asked you your least favorite Avenger, so let's be more positive this time. Who's your fave? The best. Top tier needs to be on every iteration of the team. Let me know down below. If you haven't already, like, share, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more nerdy lists. See you soon. Bye.